The United States is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be sent to Ukraine by January 20, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told journalists on Wednesday during a visit to the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Concerns about the U.S.'s ongoing commitment to supporting Ukraine, and to NATO more broadly, have been swirling since Donald Trump won the presidential election last week. Trump, with varying degrees of consistency, has been critical of NATO and support for Ukraine and Taiwan, two democracies under threat that depend on U.S. military support to counter Russia and China. He has shown little interest in the long-standing U.S. role as anchor of strategic alliances with European and Indo-Pacific democracies. Before the election, partners and adversaries already were re-evaluating their security arrangements in preparation for Trump's possible return. Blinken also insisted that now was the time for Israel to end its war in Gaza and called for more extensive humanitarian pauses in the fighting there. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, it's a pleasure, as always, to be back uh, at NATO. Uh, we had very good discussions with Secretary General Mark Rutte. Delighted to see him at the helm of the alliance uh, in this critical moment. Uh, as well as with uh, all of our NATO colleagues at the uh, North Atlantic Council. Uh, the purpose of this visit is to focus our efforts on ensuring that Ukraine has the money, the munitions, and the mobilized forces to fight effectively in 2025 or to be able to negotiate a peace from a position of strength. Uh, we've obligated just uh, recently and pushed out the door another $8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. That was in September. Another almost uh, half a billion dollars uh, just a few weeks ago. And President Biden is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be pushed out the door between now and January 20th. Uh, on the Middle East and on Gaza. Um, let me be very clear about both the intent and the effect of uh, the letter that Secretary Austin and I sent uh, a month ago to our Israeli counterparts. The intent was to inject a sense of urgency with Israel to take necessary steps to address the dire humanitarian situation of children, women, and men uh, in Gaza. The effect has been that of the 15 steps that we urged action on, Israel has taken action, either in implementing or in the, being in the process of implementing 12 of the 15 steps. There are three uh, big issues that Need, still need to be addressed that come from the, the letter. Uh, short of ending the war, which we believe now is the time to move to that, um, we have to see these humanitarian steps fully implemented, sustained, and as I said, particularly with regard to pauses, having more extensive pauses. One final thing on this. Um, Israel has to meet these responsibilities. We will be tracking this every single day. The Israeli military on Wednesday struck several sites in Beirut's southern suburbs, an area known as Dahia, after issuing evacuation warnings. It said the strikes were targeting Hezbollah facilities and interests. There were no immediate reports of casualties. Also on Wednesday, an Israeli airstrike on an apartment building in the town of Aramoun, just south of Beirut, killed at least six people and wounded 15 others Wednesday, Lebanon's health ministry said in a statement. The state-run national news agency reported that there were children missing after the strike and, it is not known whether they are under the rubble or were transferred to a hospital in the area. There was no warning issued before the strike, and it was not clear what the target was. There was no immediate statement from the Israeli military. Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when Hezbollah began launching rockets across the border in support of its ally, Hamas, in Gaza. The conflict escalated beginning in mid-September. Israel has launched a widespread aerial bombardment of Lebanon and a ground invasion that it said is intended to push Hezbollah back from the border.
Okay, we left for. President Joe Biden intends to bolster U.S. military support to Ukraine in the final months of his administration, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday, after Russia launched a sophisticated missile and drone attack on Kiev. The U.S. will continue to shore up everything we're doing for Ukraine to make sure that it can effectively defend itself against this Russian aggression, Blinken told reporters at NATO headquarters, before planned meetings with Allied envoys and Ukrainian officials. Blinken warned that North Korea's decision to send its troops into combat operations alongside Russian forces demands and will get a firm response. He didn't elaborate. U.S., South Korean and Ukrainian intelligence assessments say up to 12,000 North Korean combat troops are being sent to the war. The bulk of those troops were expected to be deployed in Russia's Kursk region where Ukrainian troops have seized a swathe of territory. Russia's early morning missile and drone attack was the first on Kiev in 73 days. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Russia is intensifying its strikes, apparently in an effort to discourage Ukrainians from continuing the war, which is approaching its 1,000-day milestone. Russia appears to be pressing its advantage as doubt swirls about how Washington might change policy on the war after Donald Trump takes office as U.S. president in January. The U.S. is the biggest provider of military help to Ukraine. Trump has slammed the Biden administration for giving Kiev tens of billions of dollars in aid and has promised to quickly end the conflict. Ukraine's international backers fear that any rushed settlement would mostly benefit Russian President Vladimir Putin.